Hi, my name is Britt Woods, and I am currently a professional writing major at Columbus State University in my junior year. So for my topic, I chose to discuss an environmental justice issue that took root in Oak Ridge, Tennessee in 1942, and began when the federal government claimed acres and acres of land with the purpose of using it to manufacture uranium that would later be used for nuclear bombs. There was a years-long campaign against this by a group of nuns, led by a nun named Sister Megan Rice. Their civil disobedience came to a head in 2012, where they pulled off one of the most well-planned civil disobedience demonstrations of all time, in my opinion. I chose to talk about this case because the individuals who carried out the demonstration of the, against this environmental injustice were older black female nuns. Sister Megan Rice was herself 82 years old at the time of the event. I thought it was so poignant that an elderly black female nun carried out a massive demonstration that sent her to prison for 20 years in a time period in which black individuals and female individuals, especially not the elderly, were listened to with weight. So throughout my presentation in parts two and three, I plan to discuss an overview of the environmental justice issue carried out by the Oak Ridge government. And I also plan to discuss how after decades of being peaceful, Sister Megan Rice and her sisters finally had enough and took a stand against this injustice in the year 2012. So welcome to part two, which is going to include an overview and description of the problem. On September 19th, 1942, the federal government claimed acres and acres of land along the Clinch River to use as a secret base. The secret base, called Oak Ridge, was created by the government for manufacturing uranium for nuclear bombs during the Manhattan Project in the Cold War. This project was designed to be hidden. Uh, locals were given barely any notice that they have to move, and many were not given any compensation. Uh, radio elements, radioactive elements contaminated groundwater and sediment for years to come. Buried nuclear waste continues to leak into swimming places, reservoirs, and rivers, places that are frequented in swimming and fishing. And in some places, the contamination levels are high enough that it is literally considered a dump site. Uh, there have been 1,000 tons of mercury disc discharged into the groundwater, air, and soil, and 27,000 982 workers have died at Oak Ridge from various cancers. This establishment even drew a lot of investors to Tennessee so they could dump their own waste. This made Tennessee one of the high, have one of the highest levels of radioactive waste processors in the world. And the worst part was the government wasn't telling the residents of Tennessee the truth. Uh, they withheld a lot of information about what was really going on and gave residents who had to relocate very minimal information or time. So the major spearhead in this case was a Nigerian nun named Sister Megan Rice. Uh, she was a nun with the Society of the Holy Child Jesus and had a master's in radioactive biology. She moved to the U.S. To from Nigeria to campaign against nuclear warfare and testing. Um, a lot of her anger and a lot of her motivation came from living in Nigeria and seeing the U.S. pay for nuclear efforts and nuclear material, but repeatedly refused to acknowledge humanitarian issues that were also occurring in Nigeria and deserved funding and attention. Uh, she didn't understand why the same attention and funding wasn't given to humanitarian issues. So she joined an organization called Transform Now Plowshare, Plowshares which is an anti-nuclear, non-violent protest group. So it's based in the Bible, the teachings of the Bible, and it predicts an eventually peaceful world with environmental equality and peace. So Sister Megan Rice engaged in non-violent protests and civil disobedience quite often and was arrested over 40 times throughout her activism. Um, the most notable arrest, which is actually the event we're gonna be discussing today, happened on July 28th, 2012, when she and other plowshare activists broke into a uranium storage facility in Oak Ridge. These were all three elderly women, and Sister Megan Rice herself was 82 years old at the time of the break-in. They spread symbols, messages, and crime scene tape and Bible verses all around the building, warning of what was to come if there was not efforts made to stop the nuclear waste and leakage happening. Um, they even approached an armed guard and asked to break bread with him and offered to read him scripture. They were not killed, um, as there were many signs posted that warned trespassers they would be shot on sight if they were seen on the property. Uh, they were, but they all three were arrested for 20 years and fined. Um, Sister, Me Sister Megan Rice still worked, however, 
She worked from behind bars to expose environmental justice, specifically environmental justice that was being covered up by major governments. Uh, she thought that citizens bear the responsibility to expose shady government activity. And because of this, a lot of members of Congress and members of the community stood behind her. And a lot of the media was outraged that they were given such large sentences, su such large sentences and such large fines. So the sentences were actually, actually ended up being appealed and the three women were resentenced. Uh, and they were only resentenced to injuring government property. And there was a huge media scandal because of this. Member, like I said, members of Congress even thanked her. And she said that the reason that she did it was because she wanted to wake people up. And that activism is so important because it makes people look. And I would assert that with everything she and the other two activists did, they definitely brought to light a lot of the really shady activity that was happening at the hands of the Oak Ridge government and Tennessee government. And I think she is an amazing spearhead and truly should be looked up to. I will discuss more in part three. So welcome to part three, where I am going to kind of give a, a wrap up, a conclusion. Uh, so I believe that my case is important in the world of environmental injustice and justice because Sister Megan Rice, this was one of the first times that a community member went in herself, especially being a woman, went in herself and exposed shady government activity and underhanded government activity that was widespreadly harming a lot of people with nuclear waste, nuclear runoff, um, just general contaminants. This was so important because this was one of the first times that a citizen went in themselves and pulled it out and said, everybody look at this. So the takeaway um, based on that, the takeaway for this for future better, better future environmental justice efforts, um, I would say is to take a page out of Sister Megan Rice's book um, she saw something that made her angry as a Nigerian woman, saw what was, saw what the U.S. was doing with nuclear materials in her own country and used it to motivate her to come all the way over here and fight nuclear injustice and fight environmental injustice. And I think that's so, such an important takeaway because she saw what she wanted and what made her angry and she went after it and she really made a very large impact in the world of environmental justice. Um, and something I learned or something that surprised me, I didn't know that Sister Megan Rice was 82 years old at the time of this, this civil act of disobedience. Um, all three of the women who entered the facility were elderly women, and I was not aware of that. I thought that they were younger women. Um, I also did not know they were nuns. I found that very interesting. Um, so overall, I had a really great time researching this case. I learned a lot, and I hope you learned a lot from my video. Thank you so much.